Now broadcasting from beautiful downtown Tallahassee, it's Classic Movie Reviews with Snark. Welcome to today's show. My name is John. As always, you can subscribe to the show on iTunes or follow the links to social media in the podcast show notes. You can also go to snarkymoviereviews.com to read notes, bios, and other random movie thoughts. Remember, this show is completely free and independent. All I ask is that you jump over to iTunes and give me a review. Today's movie is Werewolf of London, 1935. I believe it was the first sound werewolf movie and Henry Hull chose not to use the heavier makeup that was a hallmark of the Lon Chaney Jr. era and later. Henry Hull played the role of Dr. Glendon and one of the werewolves. We recently covered the great actor Henry Hull in episode 67, The Buccaneers, 1958. Warner Olin played the role of Dr. Yugami and was the other werewolf. Born in Sweden in 1879, he moved to the U.S. in 1892. In his 20s, he worked on Broadway. In the 1910s, he moved to Hollywood and began working his way into movies. He co-starred in one of the early talkies, The Jazz Singer, 1927. Olin had large epicanthic folds and could easily pass off as being of Asian ancestry. He was cast as a Chinese-American in Charlie Chan Carries On, 1931, and its sequel, The Black Camel, 1931. He was in 16 Charlie Chan films between 1931 and 37. During this period, he was the biggest earner at Fox, but descended into heavy alcohol use. Charlie Chan at the Opera, 1936, is considered to be the best of these films, as it featured Boris Karloff as the villain. While filming in 1937, Oland had a breakdown. His wife of 30 years left and went to Sweden. The 57-year-old Olin traveled to Sweden and was able to reconcile, but he caught bronchial pneumonia and quickly died. Story This universal horror film begins with Wilfred Glendon, Henry Hull, a well-respected English botanist in the Tibetan mountains looking for the rare, very rare, extremely rare, Marfasia lupino lumino, wolf flower. As near as I can translate it, it means sea phase wolf glow. Since this plant only glows in the night, they are of course hunting for it in the night on a full moon. The Tibetan guides are arguing and don't want to go. About this time, a man on a camel being led by another man comes down the path. The Tibetans take this as their cue to run away. The man is a priest and he asks why they are in the mountains. They tell him they are looking for the flower and the priest advises them to leave some things alone. Why are you here? We're looking for the Marifesa Lupino Lumino strange flower which grows only in Tibet and which it is said takes its life from the moon. Our coolies tell us the valley we want to visit is filled with demons. Yes, I'm uh, I'm afraid they thought you were one of them. That's why they ran away. I've never been into that valley and I've never known a man to return from it. He also tells them that he has never seen a man return from the demon-filled valley where the flower grows. Much like the Black Lagoon. You are foolish. But without fools, there would be no wisdom. Glendon and his assistant push on into the valley. They hear the children of the night making their beautiful music. Both men are facing mythical forces trying to hold them back. Glendon spots the glowing flower in the distance. As he carefully digs the flowers, a werewolf sneaks up and the two begin to fight. The werewolf bites Glendon on the arm, but he stabs the creature and drives it away. Now, back in London, the scarred Glendon tries to use light to make the rare flower he has obtained glow. His wife, Lisa, Valerie Hobson, fetches him for a party. She complains that he has been working too hard on his plants. At the party, Aunt Eddie, Spring Byington quizzes him about the artificial moonlight. Aunt Eddie brings Paul Ames, Lester Matthews, an old beau of Lisa's. Glendon is not happy with the meeting. A man that appears to be of Asian descent Botanist Dr. Yogami, Warner Olin, speaks to Glendon. He says they met once in Tibet in the dark. Dr. Yogami asks if Glendon recovered the wolf flower and mentions that his plant died on the way to England. Lisa admits to Paul she still has the hots for him. Dr. Yogami tells Glendon that the plant cures lycanthropy from the Greek leukos for wolf and anthros for man, or in simple terms, cures werewolfery. Flower is an antidote for. For what? Werewolfry. Lycanthrophobia is the medical term for the affliction I speak of. And do you expect me to believe that a man so afflicted 
actually becomes a wolf under the influence of the full moon? No. The werewolf is neither man nor wolf, but a satanic creature with the worst qualities of both. <laughs> I'm afraid, sir, that I gave up my belief in goblins, witches, personal devils, and uh, werewolves at the age of six. Of course, werewolf is just old English for man-wolf. Dr. Yugami explains that the beast is neither a wolf or a man, but a satanic creature. Dr. Yugami says that there are two cases in England right now. And how did these unfortunate gentlemen contract this, uh, this medieval unpleasantness? From the bite of another werewolf. And as he explains, you get it from the bite of a werewolf, touches Glendon's sleeve where the scar of the bite is located. Glendon returns to work in the laboratory. Glendon's hand begins to hair up. This is the first part of the body to grow hair in the Lon Chaney Jr., The Wolfman, 1941, and other werewolf movies. Glendon cuts away a flower from the plant and lets the sap drain into his blood, temporarily stopping the condition. Aunt Eddie is encouraging the romance between Lisa and Paul. She's having a party and invites the two while Glendon works. Dr. Yukami comes in and the dogs react badly to him. Aunt Eddie takes this opportunity to invite him to her party and calls him Dr. Yokohama. When Dr. Yogami talks to Glendon, he says the flower is not a cure, only a temporary antidote, and would save two souls. He also warns about werewolves killing what they love best. I thought you said the married phase there was a cure. No. An antidote. Effective only for a few hours. Won't you let me see the results of your experiment? Sorry. When my experiments are completed, I will show their results to the entire world. Not before. Now, sir, I must wish you good day. Then there is nothing more to be said? Nothing. Good day. But remember this, Dr. Glendon. The werewolf instinctively seeks to kill the thing it loves best. Dr. Yogami sneaks into the laboratory and steals the two blooms as Glendon reads about lycanthropy in the study. Glendon's reading reveals that the werewolf must kill one person per full moon night. When his wife and her date come by, Glendon is light sensitive. When he's alone, the cat goes crazy and freaks out. His hands start to turn and he heads for the laboratory to get a flower. As he walks, he slowly transforms into a werewolf. It is skillfully done as he passes columns in the garden. With no blooms in the laboratory, he goes full wolf. He sees the vision of Lisa. As a werewolf, he puts on his hat, coat, and scarf. Odd, don't they normally rip their shirt off? Dr. Yogami and Eddie talk and hear the call of the werewolf. Eddie freaks out a little, and they put her to bed upstairs. The howling is really putting a damper on the party. The werewolf climbs to Eddie's window, but her screams drive it away. Since he missed his first target, he kills what appears to be a streetwalker. Dr. Yugami is upset by the killing, and we see that one of the flowers has been used. Scotland Yard begins investigating the crime. Paul says it may be a werewolf. He says he's seen something similar in the Yucatan. Paul invites Lisa for a moonlight ride, but Glendon refuses to go. But wait, isn't it Paul that thinks it's a werewolf? Glendon finally agrees to go on the ride. Glendon tells his assistant he has to go away for a bit. He tells Paul and Lisa that he is not going. He forbids Lisa to go on the ride, but she throws down and storms off. Glendon goes to a bar in another town and rents a room for the night for Mrs. Mooncaster, Zephy Tilbert, and her friend. Are you a, a single gentleman, sir? Singularly single, madam. More single than I ever realized it possible for a human being to be. You don't, sir. What would you say if I were to tell you that it was possible for a man to turn into a werewolf? I'd say, I was little red riding order. <laughs> the room he takes is several stories up. Glendon prays that he not become a werewolf, but he transforms and leaps out the window. Now I have to do a little aside. Most of these werewolf guys are wealthy. So why don't they just install a cage or something in their house and stay in there for a few days each month? Anyway, the two ladies go upstairs and check out the room, but Glendon is gone. A drunk strumpet is waiting outside the gates of the zoo 
as the wolf howls crazily. She is meeting the married zoo guard. Werewolf Glendon lets one of the wolves out. When the guard goes to investigate, the werewolf makes a snack of the strumpet. He then returns to his room and the two ladies investigate again. They see the werewolf through the keyhole. Dr. Yogami goes to Scotland Yard. He is introduced as being from the University of Carpathia. Who's the dean? Count Dracula? He tells Paul's uncle, Colonel Sir Thomas Forsyth, Lawrence Grant, that there is a werewolf in London and that they can only stop the killing by seizing and growing the wolf flower. Glendon returns to his lab and the flower has not yet bloomed, so he leaves again. He goes to Lisa's family manor and says he will stay in the monk's rest, which is almost a cell. He asks the keeper to lock him in the room. That's what I was talking about earlier. Lisa just happens to drive Paul back to the old house that night as well. Glendon turns into a werewolf. When he sees Lisa and Paul, he pulls the bars out of the window and escapes. The werewolf attacks Lisa, but Paul comes and fights him off and knocks him out with a stick. In the morning, Paul reports to his Uncle Thomas that the werewolf is Glendon. Scotland Yard gets a report of another murder. When they get there, it's Dr. Yugami's room. Paul finds a dead flower in the trash. Lisa and Eddie are locked in their room, and they can't find any trace of Glendon. Glendon comes through the secret trap door in his lab. The flower is about to bloom, and Dr. Yugami comes sneaking down the stairs. He cuts the flower and injects himself. This is the first time that Glendon realizes that Dr. Yugami is the werewolf that bit him in Tibet. The two take to fighting as Glendon turns into a werewolf, so he wins the fight and kills Dr. Yugami. The werewolf climbs to the window and chases the two women from the room. Paul drives up and the werewolf jumps on him, knocking him out. The werewolf then breaks into the house, intent on killing Lisa. Uncle Thomas from Scotland Yard shows up and shoots the werewolf in the back. No silver bullet or anything special. While werewolf Glendon dies, he thanks Thomas for the bullet and tells Lisa he is sorry he could not make her happier. Thanks. Thanks for the bullet. It was the only way. In my report, I shall say that I shot him by accident while he was trying to protect his wife. When he dies, he reverts to human form. Uncle Thomas says he will cover up that he was a werewolf. World famous short summary. Woman rekindles flame with old lover as her husband struggles with werewolfism. If you enjoyed this week's show, please tell your friends. And if you really want to help, drop over to iTunes and give me a review. If you want to comment, recommend a movie, or just say hi, follow the links in the show notes to my site. Beware the Moors.